I had a little bit of time at home, not very much, but I put up these acoustic panels, four inches thick, four by four feet, and then the smaller ones down here, one foot by two foot, that's uh, two inches thick with the, uh, it's all rock wool inside of the things. Another small one up there, and then two of the bigger ones, four foot by four foot, four inch thick, behind the main speakers. Also mounted these braces here that holds the bottom of the screen to the wall. So it's basically ready. Oh, and I put the grill cloth up there. The Stuart film screen that's coming in will mount. It'll go right to the top of where that black grill cloth is. And I'll have another trim piece on the ends there. And then it'll come down to the bottom here. It's 185 is what I ended up getting with the Studio Tech 130, 1.3 gain, acoustically transparent, so it's actually, I think, a little less than 1.3, maybe 1.1 or something. Uh, haven't really done anything with the projector yet. The uh, It's still sitting up there. The anamorphic lens is sitting there from Prismasonic anamorphic lens. So uh, oh, here's one of the uh, frames for the uh, four foot by four foot. Uh, Got an extra one. I'm not sure where I'm going to put that. Probably it might not get used. It might get uh, something else because I've got a bunch more. I've got another 15 or so sheets of that uh, two foot by four foot, two inch thick rock wall. So that'll end up being on the side wall somewhere along with some columns to put the side speakers in and so on. Uh, pretty well decided I'm going to do CBT, probably a ground plane CBT line arrays for the side speakers. So it'll be ground plane, but it's actually ceiling plane because they'll be mounted up there inverted. So for people that are not familiar, ground plane CBT uh, normally would sit on the floor and then the uh, drivers would be full output at the bottom and then gradually attenuate as you move up toward the top and the circular arc would be curving it back. So it would just be an upside down version of that up there for the side speakers. So unfortunately, I'm not spending much time at home. I just got back from Dresden, Germany. Uh, there was an interesting flight over. My flight out of Austin, Texas was four hours late, so I got to Amsterdam four hours late. Missed my direct flight to Dresden, which would have been, I don't know, an hour and 20 minutes or something. KLM wanted to fly me on their airline to uh, Nuremberg, and then on Lufthansa from Nuremberg to Frankfurt, and then Lufthansa from Frankfurt to Dresden, 10 hours with layovers, except they didn't. They flew me to Nuremberg, but they forgot to tell Lufthansa that they put me on their airline. They also got me there late, one minute after the Lufthansa flight left. They said they would have waited for me if they had known I was coming, but KLM forgot to tell them I was coming. So I ended up taking the subway to the train station, a train to Leipzig, and then a train to Dresden. And So 25 hours from the time I left the house here until I got to the hotel in Dresden. That was a rough trip. Yeah, fortunately, the flight back was a little better. It was only about a 19-hour ordeal and uh, got to each connecting flight just in time, so no waiting, basically. But anyway, uh, unfortunately, I'm not sure how much more I'm going to get done on this anytime soon other than the screen. It's due to arrive now. The last update was it'll arrive here in Austin. It's actually shipped now, so hopefully this, this is going to be a good update. Uh, it's supposed to be here on the 12th. And then I can schedule somebody to come deliver it probably 13th or 14th. So I'm leaving actually for Portland, Oregon today. So I'll have to come back as soon as the thing comes in and mount it onto this frame and then head right back to Portland. And then shortly after that, I go, got to go right back to Dresden. So uh, I mean, I have, because this trip coming home to do the screen, it's going to be just that. I won't have time to do much of anything else. So I know it's been a long time since I've done an update, and it may be a long time before I can do another update after this one. But uh, unfortunately, I have to work in this uh, chip shortage. You know, it's got uh, semiconductor equipment manufacturers pretty busy. You know, we're, we're building machines faster than we can, really. I mean, if you want to order one of our machines now, it's going to be a while before you get it. So, but uh, anyway, so it's keeping me busy. But then again, that's, you know, how I can hopefully afford this stuff. So uh, price of drivers has gone way up. Fortunately, I bought most of the drivers for these big lines uh, before prices started going up. 
because at current prices, it's about $12,000 worth of drivers to make those three lines. And I've got a wholesale account and I bought most of the AMT or all of the AMTs actually, I guess, back when I could get them for a lot less than what they are now. And actually got the five inch drivers quite a bit less too, but I'm gonna be ordering some uh, GRS uh, planers, little three and a half inch tall planers to put in the surrounds. I've got, I think, 30 of those on hand, but I need probably another 60 of them. And I was probably gonna just get these same drivers for the sides, but they've gotten so expensive and I need like a hundred of them. Uh, I'm thinking about using a little peerless driver, same size basically, that's quite a bit cheaper. And uh, I think for this round, it's probably they're good enough, so I may go with those. But, uh, and then we still haven't done the spray foam in the attic. Uh, my builder's got a couple other houses being built. We're thinking, you know, when those get ready, one, one or the other of those is ready for their spray foam. They'll have the guy just come do my theater ceiling while they're doing that. So just kind of waiting on that. So uh, anyway, that's about the uh, all I've got for the update for the theater. Uh, had some work done out back. I'll show a quick shot of that here in a minute. Uh, updated the back patio. Okay, not back. On the patio, we're adding this uh, little storage building. Now this is going to be a concrete driveway. They just haven't done it yet. It's supposed to be coming up pretty soon. And then uh, the neighbor here wants to extend their driveway at the same same time. So we'll do all of that together. I'm going to come off from this line right there. Go straight out five or six feet and then curve around to the little storage area here. And got a little breezeway here, which actually was uh, just so that I have room to get in here. I mean, I probably should have thought of this and had this done when the house was built, but I didn't. So, oh yeah, that camera and light's got to be moved. Put it on the outside over there when I have time. But, uh, so this was mainly just so these guys could get in here and put the siding in. Otherwise, we could add it closer, but uh, everybody that's seen this is like, wow, what a cool idea. You got a breezeway there. You get nice, cool air coming through to your patio. So they're like complimenting that more than any of this. So this will be where the riding lawnmower and wheelbarrow and whatnot will be put to get it out of the garage. So you get more room around the CNC. And then covered patio here. Still got to install the lights. So, uh, oh, window unit air conditioner because the AC is not quite working right. And I put that in there temporarily to cool the bedroom down. So, and I'm having trouble getting uh Airtron to come fix it. I'm getting ready to start filing complaints with every state attorney general in the country, I think, and uh, everyone where they operate anyway, and just inundate them with complaints and force them to do something. So, usually works pretty well when you do that. Now, hot tub finally came in. Ordered that back in like October. Came in like three weeks ago. I'm going to put in the rock here. I'll be putting I was just going to put Lattice there, but Lydia's girl I'm hanging around with, she said, no, not do that. Use your CNC to make some neat design pattern or something to put between those columns. So, might do that. But that's the patio. This thing was way over budget. So, trying to cut into the theater budget a little bit. Didn't expect it to, to be as much as it turned out to be, but oh well, it'll be nice anyway. So, well, that's it for the back patio update. It's, uh, it's working out nice. It's just uh, everything right now is so expensive. Materials cost, labor cost, everything's higher right now. So that's about it for now. Oh, and the uh, Subaru came in, end of April. I ordered that like in October or November, maybe it was. I think it was, no, I think it was October. Subaru Outback, uh, Onyx, 2.4 turbo. I had actually bought a Volkswagen Taos. Uh, a couple of weeks, two or three weeks earlier, hated it. Thing was super noisy. You know, you, on a rough pavement, you couldn't drive more than 30 minutes before you'd have to stop and let your ears rest. It was so bad. So, plus the turbo lag, you know, you stomp on it and 10 minutes later it lunges. But uh, yeah, that don't buy a Volkswagen Taos. So that was the all wheel drive one. I think the two wheel, they say the turbo lag's not as bad. I don't know about the road noise, but yeah, buy a Subaru. This was uh, actually, cheaper than the Taos. This was like 38 even. The Taos was 37.5 plus 1,000 for being available. So 38.5. 
So, uh, so I traded it in like two, three weeks after I bought it when this finally came in because I'd gotten tired of waiting for this to come in and bought that one because I was about to go on my storm chasing vacation and driving to Kansas. And so bought that thing and uh, hated it. So like I said, don't buy a Volkswagen Taos. It uh, was a good idea, but it went terribly wrong. They need to completely redesign it. So with the Subaru, it's fantastic. Love the thing.